Hi, hey, welcome back to class. Today we are going to be talking about variation. Variation is defined by any change in one quantity that gives a result in another quantity. That is, a change in one thing affects the other thing. There are three types of variation, direct variation, inverse variation, and a joint variation. CSEC is concerned with direct variation and inverse variation, and so we are going to spend some time today talking about those two types of variation. Direct variation is sometimes called a direct proportion. This is the case because when one thing goes up, the other one goes up. And if one thing goes down, the other one goes down. So sometimes they're called a direct proportion. This is the equation that we use when we're talking about direct variation. Of course, the question will differ depending on the circumstances, but the general equation is something of this sort. Y is equal to kx. That k is what we call our constant of, va of variation. It is a part of every equation, and you have to find that value in every question. Let us demonstrate how that works. Suppose we have a case where p varies di directly as r cube. So our equation should look something like y equal kx. In this case, though, we are talking about p and r cube. So p will vary directly as r cube, which means p is equal to k times r cube. In every question, you will be given a pair of values. Right here is our pair of values that we, we will use those two numbers to substitute into this equation and use them to find the value of k. That is their purpose. So substituting p, we have 4 is equal to k times 2 cube, which means that 4 is equal to 8k. And from that, we can tell that k is equal to 4 over 8, or a half. Now that we have our k, we're going to put that k back into this equation to give us a general form of the equation. That general form is going to be p, writing it up here, is equal to k, which is a half, r cube. This is what we're going to use now to find the missing values that are in the table. So, by substitution, p is equal to half r cubed, and we are to find the value of 2 when r is equal to 0 0.2, which means that p is equal to half of 0 0.2 cubed. You can put that in a calculator and get your answer. I'm not going to be using a calculator right now, so I'm going to write that as a fraction. 1 over 2, 0 0.2 is 1 over 5. And multiplying this out, I'm going to get um, a half of 125, which is 1 over 250. So in this case, m here is going to be 1 over 250. Of course, you could just punch that in your calculator and get your answer. In the second instance, we are told that p is equal to 62.5. So substituting that p, 62.5 is equal to half of r cube. First, let's multiply this equation by 2 to get rid of this half. Multiplying it by 2 gives us 125 is equal to r cube, and now we can see a path to a solution by taking the cube root, and the cube root of 125 is equal to 5. So the answer that goes here is 5. So when p is equal to 62.5, n is equal to 5. Let's look at one more. S varies directly as r plus 1. So our, our equation is going to be written as s is equal to k times r plus 1. Remember, you can't ignore your k. It has to be a part of every question. We are given a pair of values. S is 8 when r is 3. So we drop them in. 8 is equal to k times 3 plus 1, which means 8 is equal to 4k, which means that k is equal to 8 over 4, which gives us... Two. This 2 now needs to go back into this equation to give us the more general form, which is s is equal to 2 bracket r plus 1. And this is what we're going to use to solve this part of the question that says calculate the value of r when s is 20. So if s is 20, 
then 20 is equal to 2 times r plus 1. We can divide both sides by 2. That gives us 10 is equal to r plus 1. These two will cancel. So then r is going to be equal to 10 take away 1, which means r is equal to 9. So you write your equation, you find your k, and you substitute to find your value. Let's look at another one. M varies directly as V square. So M is going to be equal to K V square. M is 2 when V is 3. So 2 is equal to K times 3 square, which means 2 is equal to 9K. And that tells us that K is equal to 2 over 9. We now take this, put it back in this equation to give m is equal to 2 over 9 times v square. And then we use this to find the missing value or values. In this case, we are to find the value of m when v is 6. So m is going to be equal to 2 over 9 times 6 square, which means 2 over 9 times 36. Doing some cancellation here, we see that m is equal to 2 times 4 which is 8. Let's talk now a little bit about inverse variation. Now, in direct variation, when one quantity goes up, the other goes up. In inverse variation, when one quantity goes up, the other one goes down. The general form of the equation is y is equal to k over x. So when we start, our equation should look something like this. Let's look at some examples. Given that y varies inversely as x squared, so we're going to write y is equal to k over x squared. And we're given up here, as always, y is 3 when x is 2. So 3 is equal to k over 2 squared, which means 3 is equal to k over 4. That tells us that k is equal to 3 times 4, which is 12. We take that k, we put it back into this equation to give y is equal to k, which is 12, over x squared. This is our nice bad boy. It's our equation that we're going to use to find other value here. Now let's do the calculation. It says calculate the value of y when x is 3, which should be pretty simple. So we say y is equal to 12 over x squared. x is 3, so it's over 3 squared. y is therefore equal to 12 over 9. And that is our solution. Of course, you could simplify this down. I'm dividing by 3. So you could get um, 4 over 3, but that's essentially the same thing. Let's look at another example. Here, y varies inversely as x. So this one comes out exactly as is. y is equal to k over x. y varies inversely as x. And we are given a pair of values in the table. So we are told y is 8 when x is 2. That gives us k over 2, which tells us that k is equal to 2 times 8. So k is 16. We're going to put that value back into this equation. So y is going to be equal to 16 over x. This is our general equation. This is what we're going to use to find the value of, x, of y when x is 32, which again is pretty straightforward. So y is equal to 16 over 32, which is simply a half. So the hard part of the work is generally in how you find the value of k. Once you find the value of k, you substitute that into your equation to get your specific form, and then you use it to find the missing values. Let's look at our final example. y varies inversely as the cube of x. So we're going to write y is equal to k over x cube. That is the cube of x. We are given a pair of values here. y is 7 when x is 6. So 
7 is going to be equal to k over 6 cubed. That gives us 7 is equal to k over 216, which means k is equal to 1,512. You can use a calculator to verify that. Once you get that value, you can now rewrite it in this equation to get y is equal to 1,512 over x cubed. This is the general form of our equation. And we're going to use it to answer parts A and B of the question. So, find y when x is 3. Since this is our equation, we're going to substitute 3 here. So, y is equal to 1,512 divided by 3 cubed, which means 1,512 over 27. And that calculates out to give you 56. When you do your calculations, the second part, part B, says find x when y is 189. So y is equal to 1,512 over x cubed. We want to find y. We want to find x when y is 189. So 189, we substitute our y value, is 1,512 divided by x cubed. Let's do a little bit of switch here. So x cubed is equal to 1,512 divided by 189. That gives us 8. And therefore, x is equal to the cube root of 8, which is 2. This is pretty much how variation works. In direct variation, you are given a situation where one quantity increases as the other one increases. In, the, in inverse variation, one quantity increases as the other one decreases. The idea is to find your general equation, as we did a general equation here, whether it's direct or inverse, and use the value of k to make it more specific. And once you find that specific equation, you can use it to find your missing values. Now that you know how variation works, go find some examples and practice to become better at it.